What is going on guys? It is Michael from GPRisers.com and today I am building another RTX 3070 Ti rig. However, uh, we already made a video on this. Um, so in today's video, I'm gonna be building this, but I'm also going to just be talking to you guys about my opinions on these cards and where I see the future of this going. So as I've said, um, we just released a video on the RTX 3070 Ti. Um, I'm not gonna go through the whole rig build process here. However, while I'm putting it together, I decided I should go ahead and make a video and kind of just give my opinions and my thoughts on these cards and why I'm you know, choosing these more than any other card right now to fill my rigs with. So a little bit of backstory on my, you know, mining adventures in the past, you know, five or so years. Um, I was always really heavily into AMD cards. Now it was almost a no brainer back then, you know, it was really like, okay, you have a 470 or, you know, um, I think the 1070s were just coming out at the time and, and those were great mining cards, but however, they were, you know, a little bit more expensive. So at that time, really, it was just, you know, 2016, it, it was really just, you know, Ethereum that was the main coin to mine. So when you're talking about just Ethereum, it was like, okay, well, you know, wattage wise and everything like that, why would I choose a 1070, a GTX 1070, over you know an rx 470 or 480 so the 1063 gigabytes were great you know um they they mined ethereum they were you know cheap they weren't the 10 you know i think they mined ethereum at around 24 if you had the good memory on it um and then a rtx or sorry a gtx 1070 um, would get around 29 to 31 mega hash on Ethereum. So, you know, they, they were better, um, you know, at mining than the RX 470, 480, but they also were much more expensive. And so when you're mining just Ethereum, it's like, you know, why am I going to spend more money on this card and everything like that? But um, really, you know, going through the years, I started to notice new coins coming out, new algorithms. And for whatever reason it was, AMD cards were just awful at mining any other algorithm other than Ethereum. But when comparing AMD and NVIDIA, um, NVIDIA cards really have um, a lot more capability when it comes to different algorithms. So, you know, for instance, right when T-Rex miner came out, it's like, oh, you know, we, we can mine these, you know, dual mine a car with Ergo and, you know, Ethereum. And it's, well, g guess what? You know, AMD cards, again, aren't good at doing that. That said, it was really about two years ago, I want to say now, that I really started, you know, um, kind of teeter-tottering on the idea of just switching over the entire farm, you know, or at least, you know, a majority of it over to NVIDIA cards. So I started with 2070 Supers. You know, I got a good amount of those, and at the time you could just go on Best Buy and buy six of them for MSRP and get them delivered. Now that's unheard of. Um, but, you know, I, I did that and I, you know, replaced some 470s. I had tons of four, no, not, I'm sorry, I had tons of 480s. But long story short, I switched over uh, to NVIDIA. I got those 2070 Supers. Supers, and I started noticing, you know, more and more that, hey, I can mine all these other different algorithms and different coins with these cards. So, you know, ultimately, that's why I kind of decided to switch over to NVIDIA. And I did have six Radeon 7s that I did end up selling because I wanted to swap. I could, you know, at the time that I sold them, I could get you know, the same amount dollar-wise as an RTX 3080. And everyone was saying, oh, you know, the Radeon 7 mines at 100 mega hash, you know, the RTX 3080, you know, can get 100, but it thermal throttles down to 90. So, you know, therefore, a, a Radeon 7 is, you know, better than a 3080. But, you know, switching the Radeon 7s for the RTX 3080s, um, non-LHRs, was pretty much an even swap for me at the time. Plus or minus maybe, you know, $100. And I'm saying that's for all six included. So, um, and I overall, the wattage stayed the same. Um, however, my total hash rate per card probably did drop, I wanna say maybe eight to 10 because they do thermal throttle like crazy. But, you know, the Radeon 7, they were all, you know, about four months away from being out of warranty. And I ended up swapping them all for 3080 non-LHRs. And looking back, I'm so glad I did that. And so coming back to the RTX 3070 Ti's, um, these are just really rock solid cards and they're available. You know, these are the newest generation cards. The TI versions are the newest generation. So right off the bat, all of these are under warranty right away. If this card's fan goes bad or this one starts having heat issues or, or whatever it is, I can RMA all of them. So yeah, they might have each cost about $1,000, um, a little bit over actually. Um, but 
at the end of the day, I have warranties on all of them, which, you know, in my, you know, head, the way I'm thinking about this is a longevity standpoint. These will be mined on 24 7, 365. So it is, you know, in turn, a little bit of future proofing. Um, and I think that that's very important when you're, you know, trying to lay out a whole mining farm is, you know what, in a year from now, if a new algorithm comes out, I know a lot of these new algorithms that come out, um, some of them actually are less demanding for VRAM, some are more demanding. Um, but whatever it may be, um, no, I'm going to have the newest uh, cards possible. You know, these all have eight gigabytes of VRAM. I don't have to worry about VRAM. So yeah, I mean, I don't want to ramble on too long. I'm going to go ahead and get all these cards out um, and get them all onto this rig. I am using an um, ASRock H110 board and a EVGA, EVGA 1600 watt uh, P2 power supply. Of course, I will be using our eight capacitor risers and our white 18 AWG splitters and also our 64 gigabyte SSD boot drive. So I, you know, I'm gonna, th this whole video again is just gonna be my opinions on these cards and you know, the future proofing and everything like that. It's not gonna be so much on uh, building the actual rig, uh, but if you guys are interested in building the rig, we do have another video uh, that is, you know, step-by-step -step putting together a 10, or, I'm sorry, a 3070 Ti um, RTX rig build. So that said, I'm gonna get all of these out and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I got the other boxes out. Um, I got all the cards laid out here. If you're not familiar with the gaming Trio X's, they are an absolute monster of a card. So these cards are big. Um, I did have one of these prior and I tried to fit it in my mini ITX case. And if you look right here, um, this thing jets out a little bit right here and the, it was just enough that I was, wasn't able to fit it. I had to take out the front case fan to fit it. That said, these cards are massive. Um, they are very, they're bigger than the Further Wind 3 editions. Um, I think the Further Wind 3 editions might be a little bit thicker, but they're not nearly as long. But I kind of wanted to talk about that first because I mean, like every time I take out one of these um, Gigabyte Aurora's cards, they're just huge. You can see the difference there. I'm not gonna ramble too much about it. I just kinda, every time I take them out, I just, I, I can't help but just laugh. Uh, one thing I'm gonna point out really quick here, uh, this model has two eight pins and one six pin. So since these cards are going to be drawing about 210 watts, I am going to be powering all of them with a single splitter. Now I have nine of them laid out here. Uh, the reason why is because there are nine VGA slots here on the EVGA 1600 watt power supply. And I know I'm not gonna go super in depth on this video. I kinda wanna just chat with you guys while I'm building this. Uh, just real quick, I'm connecting one of these splitters to each PCIe cable. That way, six cards are being able to be powered, and then six risers will also be able to be powered by the three other splitter cables. Uh, for these cards, um, a splitter cable is going to be powering these, and then um, there are a couple VGA lines that are coming out from the power supply there that are a four pin, which will be connected to one of these. And there is also a six pin that dangles off of it, which will be connected to that. So these will all be powered just fine. These have the normal dual eight pins. So for the ones that are asking, um, why did you get the, you know, some of the highest end model cards that you can get? You know, why didn't you just get something, you know, a little bit cheaper? And the reason is because these are pretty much the same exact price. I got them for the same exact price as like, just say a lower end, you know, Gigabyte or a lower end Zotac model. And that's because there's so much demand for these cards right now that, you know, no one really cares the model. If they want the card, they'll just get any of the cards. And because there's such a high demand and a low supply of these things, the, the prices of them, you know, really average out. But in a couple of years, when these things are on the used market, people are going to be more sought after the higher end model. So if you can, you know, if you're going to spend the money, why not spend, you know, even if it's another 20 or 30 bucks more, why not spend the extra cash and get the higher end models? Because in a couple of years when you're selling these off and upgrading to the 5080s or whatever it is, um, these cards are going to be worth more than the lower end ones. So tell me what you guys think down in the, in the you know, comments below. You know, do you guys ever really think, you know, in terms of, you know, what, how you're going to sell these things in a couple of years and upgrade? Or are you just more concerned about the here and now and saving 20 bucks per card is something that you know you're interested in doing right now yeah you know there's not really a right or wrong answer you know with, with, with doing it um, but like I said you know if you're getting into mining you know recently in the past year or so and you haven't really been through the you know cycles of selling equipment and buying new equipment and, and that kind of thing because that will come you will not be you know mining on these for five years I mean you might be you know people are still mining on 470s but um, 
you know, the general, general consensus is that you, you will be upgrading these as you go along. So that's just something, you know, that, that I wanted to share with you guys if you guys are new, newer to mining is, um, you know, think about the resale of these cards. So that's something to take into, into account, you know, obviously take good care of the cards, but, you know, I keep all the boxes for all my cards. It's a huge pain. They take up tons of space. However, you know, I, I know from experience, you know, especially people buying graphics cards in the used market, if you're selling this thing and it's super clean, and you have a box with it, you know, people are going to know that you took good care of it and they're going to pay a little bit more of a premium for that. So that's just, you know, my two cents on, on you know, why I ended up with the higher end models. But I'm going to go ahead and get this plastic off of it. I'm going to get one on here uh, just to test it out, get miner stat installed on our GPRisers.com um, boot drive here. And then when I get back um, after one's installed, I'm going to talk a little bit more, um, probably just ramble on a little bit more on, um, you know, why I think the 3070 Ti's will not depreciate as much as some of the other cards. So that said, I'll be right back. I'm going to get one popped up on its new home and get miner stat installed. And we'll see you guys in a second. All right, guys. So we have one of the MSI gaming trios up on the rig already. Um, I always do one to begin with, just so I can get the overclock supplied and everything like that. Um, I am going to get these other five going. Just want to give this another minute or two. Yeah, I kind of just want to see, you know, what you guys are mining with. Um, I see a lot of other people are getting the 6600 XTs. I saw the 6800s are pretty good with mining. Um, they've been out for quite a while now. It seems like supply is pretty limited on those. So um yeah that's kind of why i'm sticking with the 3070 ti's i do have a good amount of you know non lhr cards the 3060 ti's uh 3070s 3080s and um 3090s however i don't really like having all my eggs in one basket i kind of want to mix it up a little bit um i know this is my second rig uh with six of these cards however i will you know just because of pure availability and close to msrp um i think i'm going to be doing another one of these along with the 3060 ti lhr build um, it's always good to have a little bit of a diversity and that's kind of what I think I mean again drop a comment down below if you guys you know what cards are you guys running you know what are your thought process do you think I'm wrong on this I mean um, I want to see where your guys head is at because that's really what all this is right it's a community of people that mine you know um, all these other youtubers that are up uh, you know a lot of them that we do work with you know we see every day um, you know videos that they're making and what they're mining with um, but I like to hear what you guys are mining with. I think I might actually include um, some AMD cards in the future. Um, I do have actually a couple of 6600 XTs. They just, you know, they barely use any wattage, but they're also, you know, uh, they don't really hash all too well. And I do understand the whole, you know, mega hash per watt. However, I am a big fan of consolidation. But that said, I am going to test it out. I want to have a rig with 6600 XTs. Ideally, I want to have uh, you know, one whole rig with, you know, every single type of card that's out there. That way, whenever new algorithms come out, dual mining capabilities, whatever it is, um, I'm able to test it across, you know, an array of different, you know, styles of rigs. So, you know, that said, um, I am going to get the rest of these up there. I'll be right back in one second. All right, guys, we have all of the cards running now. Um, I'm not going to lie, I did have a couple of issues with this um, over the past 20 or so minutes. Kept having a driver issue. I am running on minor stat. Um, it kept saying that there was a 16x slot error, but um, I think that it just needed to update and clear some cash because now it's working just fine. So looking at this from an accounting perspective, uh, full transparency, I'm not an accountant. Um, I'm actually a tax attorney and I also have a background in finance that's why you guys hear me talking a lot about you know financial forecasting and tax planning and things of that nature um, I did want to point out because I started feeling like this the past week and um, you know I always, I'm a numbers guy uh, but when I start looking at spreadsheets I start realizing you know different things and I just wanted to you know talk to you guys about it and that is when you're buying cards you, you know it's like okay you know, you're looking at this rig here and you're like, okay, just say each card's a thousand dollars plus, you know, just say a, a little bit of a markup, you know, the power supply, the case, the risers, SSD, everything like that. Um, just, you know, first, let's just use $7,000 for an example. You know, you might start feeling like, okay, you know, I, I spent $7,000, that's $7,000 less that I have in my bank account. And yeah, I'm, you know, getting income every day from this mining rig, but I cannot stress enough to start, you know, transforming that thought. Whereas, you know, instead of having $7,000 in, you know, one piggy bank, you have $7,000 in assets. 
specifically computer equipment and graphics cards. So really when you spend that $7,000, it went from you know one bank account into another account, which is your equipment. So in, in a business perspective, that would be your books. Instead of having cash, you have more equipment now, which is good because looking at it from a tax standpoint, you can depreciate that equipment. Of course, you know, when you guys saw in the beginning of the video, I had all of them laid out over here. Um, they were worth more than what they're worth now. You know, they automatically depreciated right off the bat. Um, however, they didn't depreciate a whole lot because you can't just go on Amazon and buy any of these. So although whatever the cash amount is, it transfers over into your equipment value, which then you can start, you know, every month or so say, okay, what is a 3070 Ti worth this month? So then every month you can kind of see like, okay, is a 3070 Ti, is it worth $100 less than what I paid for it now? Is that what it's going for, you know, in third party marketplaces? So just say all these cards dropped, you know, $100, 10%. Um, you know, next month, okay, you know, instead of $7,000, now the whole rig is worth $6,400. And then you can do an analysis on what it mined that month. So I know in the comments, and I mentioned in other videos, we, we are going to be building out a whole series on how to start this as a business, how to look at it from a tax perspective. And we're gonna break it out into the most simplest terms that we can for you guys. But I just wanted to leave that little tidbit here. You know, while I was building this rig, I, I kept thinking about it. And so I know some of you out there are also thinking about it. It's a lot of money to spend on cards. However, the way you really have to look at it, especially when you're, you know, getting into this kind of operation is really the thought process of you have the money here and now it's here, but you still have the money and it's sitting right in front of you. That is how every business operates. Um, you know, they, they always have equipment value. They always have assets. And that is on their balance sheets for what the, you know, what the company has and what the company is worth. So just food for thought. Um, I just wanted to include that in this video before we, you know, head out. I am going to go ahead and put this back into the mines and I will get a little bit of B-roll for you guys. Um, we'll play it at the end of this video just because these cards look so neat. But that's gonna be everything. Um, I know a lot of you guys, again, have been asking for these, you know, starting a business around crypto mining and everything like that. So please drop a comment down below uh, with any specifics that you guys might have. Uh, we know that, you know, uh, the generic questions, but if you have anything in particular that you'd like us to touch on in the, you know, the business series that we're going to make, make sure to include that down below. And we wanna make sure that we get all of your guys' questions answered. But that's gonna be everything for this video. I appreciate you guys stopping by. I hope everyone has a great rest of their day and we'll see you guys next time.